I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on vectors. In this video, we'll discuss relative velocity application. If you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Also, check the website for the latest videos. We'll begin with an example, which is an airplane is flying on a bearing of 345 degrees at 330 miles per hour. Wind is blowing with the bearing of 300 degrees at 40 miles per hour. Find actual speed and direction of the plane. That's the question for you to solve. To understand solution of such questions, we are going to look into how do we represent vectors? How do we resolve vectors in components? How do we add vectors? Find the result in magnitude and the direction, right? So the question can be broken down into these components. That is going to help us to understand the concepts of vectors which we've learned and how do we apply these concepts in real life situations. Some of our viewers might like to know what is bearing angle? Well, bearing angle is measured from not in the clockwise direction. So in this particular case, when we are saying that the plane is flying on the bearing of 330, uh, of a bearing of 345 degrees, right? That's the bearing. So in that case, it really means that from north, it makes an angle of 345 degrees, right? That is what it means. So the plane is flying in this particular direction. So if this angle is 345 degrees, then from the north, what remains here is 360 minus 345, correct? Which is equal to 15 degrees. So this angle will be 15 degrees. So that is how you can actually display the vector on the Cartesian plane. So in this Cartesian plane, we're taking north as the y-axis and east on the x-axis. So that becomes the base or the foundation for solving such a question. At this stage, I'd like you to pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now let us see, how do we really begin solving such a question? So let's go through the statement once again, which is an airplane is flying on a bearing of 345 degrees at 330 miles per hour. So you need to draw a vector diagram, right? So this is what we are showing here, which is a vector diagram. So from north, we have shown that this plane which is written as VP, is flying with 330 miles per hour, and the bearing angle is 345. That really means, as I was saying, this angle here is 345 degrees, right? So what remains is 15 degrees, correct? From the north. So that becomes the direction for the plane. The magnitude is written along the, the line which shows vector. So the length of this vector is represented by the magnitude, right, which is 330 miles per hour. Similarly, we could represent the wind also on the same diagram. Wind is blowing with the bearing of 300 degrees at 40 miles per hour. So that is the wind, Vw. When we say 300, so 300 means what? 300 means it is 270 plus 30, correct? And that is how we get this angle 30 here above the horizontal x-axis. So we have calculated the angles right there. Now, we need to find the actual speed and the direction of the airplane. To find the actual speed and the direction, what we need to do is to add the velocities of the plane. Let me write resultant velocity will be now equal to the velocity of the plane plus the velocity of the wind. You could do this using 
parallelogram of forces, right? So what we have done here is we have completed the parallelogram. This was your velocity for the plane, wind velocity. Completing the parallelogram, we get the resultant velocity Vr, as you can see here. Now, this resultant velocity will be in quadrant two as shown here. We now need to find the magnitude of this and the direction. And we'll prefer to give the direction of this velocity in the form of bearing angle, kind of like this. You get the idea, right? So to measure this, what are we going to do? We'll find this angle theta, and then our bearing angle will be what? Bearing angle will be 270 plus theta, right? From north, correct? So that is how we'll get the result. So that is how we are going to get the result. So I hope you got the concept. So first step first is to resolve these into two components. So the plane velocity, Vp, will be resolved into these two components, correct? Since this portion here is the adjacent side for 15 degrees angle, this portion will be Vp cos of 15 degrees, correct? Where Vp is 330. And along the direction, which is parallel to x-axis, we'll have the sine component. For the wind, we are going to have we can resolve this into these two components, where the horizontal component will be V wind cos of 30 degrees. Of course, a negative sign, since it is on the negative side. Similarly, that is also pointing towards the negative direction. And the vertical component here will be Vw sine of 30 degrees. So that is how you can actually resolve the two velocities, velocities of airplane and the wind along x and y directions. We normally write them in terms of unit vectors i and j, right? So i is a unit vector along the s direction and j is the unit vector along the y direction. So we'll resolve these forces, resolve these vectors in the two components i and j, add them and then find the result, correct? So let's do that now. I hope the concept is clear to you, right? So the strategy is resolve vectors in components and add them up. Here is how we are going to do. So airplane velocity Vp can now be written as the magnitude of 330 times sine of the angle which we calculated as 15 degrees, right? And the vertical component is 330 cos of 15 degrees. Horizontal component written with I, negative sign since it is pointing towards west, and J represents along the north, right? Unit vector. Using the calculator, you can find the value of sine 15 multiplied by 330. So I've rounded this figure to one decimal place. So we get the velocity as minus 85.4I plus 318.8 j. Similarly, we have written the velocity of the wind as minus 40 sine 30 degrees i plus 40 cos 30 degrees j, right? Clearly, this is these x and y components, correct? For the wind. And as far as the plane is concerned, those are the two components which we are talking about. Correct. So we have now got the two in component forms. It is very easy to add when you write them into its components along the x-axis and the y-axis, right? So we can now add them up to get the resultant Vr. So resultant is basically the sum of the two velocities. So adding the x components together and then the y components together, we get the result which is the sum of these two velocities is the resultant velocity minus 105.4i plus 353.4j. 
Now we need to find the magnitude and the direction, right? Those are the two things. So the magnitude is a square plus b square square root for any vector, right? So we'll, we have this magnitude here, which is 105.4 whole square plus 353.4 whole square. And when you square root this, you get a magnitude of 368.8 miles per hour, which is the unit for the velocity we are considering. To find the angle, let us calculate the related acute angle, right? So, so alpha is related acute angle. So alpha is a related acute angle, which is if we have a resultant velocity, which uh, I showed in the previous diagram, let's say this is our resultant velocity. In that case, alpha is this angle, right? So we could find this using tan ratio, correct? So we know the resultant vertical component, right? And the resultant horizontal component. So I should say this is resultant vertical and this is resultant horizontal component. Using their ratios with tangent, we can find the angle alpha, which comes out to be 73.4 degrees. Now, from north, what is the answer? Well, from north, the solution is that it is all throughout. We will add this to 270 degrees to get our answer. So the direction is 270 plus the related acute angle, 73.4, which gives us 343.4 degrees. So that becomes the direction of the plane. Perfect. So that is how we are going to actually solve this particular question. So the answer here is that we have a magnitude of 368.8 miles per hour and the direction is that the plane is going at a bearing of 343.4 degrees. So, so the resultant is 368.8 miles per hour on the bearing of 343.4 degrees. Is that clear to you? So that is how we are going to solve such questions. So that brings us to the end of this video, where we have learned how easily we can actually break down a real life situation into vectors, write them as components, add them up and get the result. In. I hope you find it interesting and useful. Feel free to write a comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.